The phrase, 40 acres and a mule, has become a mantra for those in the civil rights movement. A bittersweet symbol that evokes the hopes and broken promises that have so often been attached to America's struggle with its race problem. But what is the reality behind the phrase? Were African Americans, as a people, actually promised land and sustenance as part of some 19th century reparations program? Here we will examine the history and distortions of this oft-quoted phrase. In late 1864, General William Tecumseh Sherman was marching through Georgia, followed by thousands of former slaves. Around Christmas 1864, he entered Savannah. While in Savannah, in January 1865, he attended a meeting organized by Edwin Stanton, President Lincoln's Secretary of War. The meeting took place in an ornate Gothic Revival mansion called the Green Meldrum House. It was attended by numerous black leaders, looking for help for the formerly enslaved, recently freed from the many plantations overrun or threatened by the Northern Army. These plantations comprised huge swaths of land and had been declared abandoned by the U.S. government as their owners had risen up in rebellion. Located along the Atlantic coast of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, they amounted to approximately 400,000 acres, or 1,600 square kilometers. Following the meeting, Sherman decided to distribute this land amongst the formerly enslaved. This order was codified in what was known as Special Field Order No. 15. According to Sherman's order, each family shall have a plot of not more than 40 acres of tillable ground. 40 acres was generally accepted as the optimal size for a family farm. The order made no mention of farm animals. However, General Rufus Saxton, who was put in charge of administering the land in Georgia, did provide surplus U.S. Army mules to some of the families granted land under Sherman's order. In April 1865, upon the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson became president. And on May 28, 1865, Johnson issued a proclamation of pardon and amnesty to citizens in the South who would take an oath of allegiance. As part of this pardon, lands confiscated during the war would be returned to the white landowners. This essentially canceled the redistribution of land ordered by General Sherman. Nearly 40,000 formerly enslaved people who had been given land under Sherman's order were evicted as the white former landowners demanded their property back. Most of those evicted were forced into a subsistence existence working as sharecroppers. Despite popular belief, Special Field Order No. 15 was not a general reparations program. It was simply the reapportionment of a particular amount of confiscated land. And 40 acres was the maximum grant of land. The typical land grant would have been far less. And although the number of black families benefiting from the order would have numbered the tens of thousands, this is a fraction of the roughly 5 million blacks who then lived in the United States. Deviant knowledge tries to bring you history you were never taught and voices you never heard. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you appreciate little known histories and non-mainstream perspectives, please consider subscribing. We're just starting out and we're looking to build a community of fellow deviant heads.